Hi, my name is Joanne Lee. I am a part of the Community Service Learning Program at the University of Alberta. We are currently working with the Regional Environmental Action Committee on a plastics room manufacture project. Through that, I have the amazing opportunity to interview you, Dr. Sarah Jean. And on that, can you please tell our viewers a bit about yourself and your work as well? Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Sarah Jean Ryer. Um, I did my PhD in biogeochemistry in Barcelona. And um, I started being very interested in plastic pollution when I was in Barcelona itself and started a group uh, called Run and Care, where we would go and pick up trash while running along the coastlines in Barcelona. Uh, and then I moved to Hawaii and I started working on plastic degradation and its effect on the environment. So I worked uh, at the University of Hawaii for four years on different projects related to plastic pollution. And then I did uh, a two and a half year uh, postdoc in at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And now we've been back uh, to Hawaii to continue working on marine debris. Well, you mentioned just now that you were just running along the shore and picking out plastics. Is that how you got started on your project or, or in, your, in your activism? Yeah, exactly. So that was in 2009. And I guess this is how I, I, I realized this is when I realized that plastic pollution is a big issue uh, that consumers, they don't always care about the issue itself. And very often, like they will leave the trash uh, behind them at the beach, for example, and then the waves will come, the tide will, will come high and then we'll bring back all of the trash in the ocean. So uh, yeah, it made me really sad to see this. And that's why I started a running group, but then it's not enough, of course. And then uh, my research is now all about plastic degradation and plastic pollution in the environment. So I feel like this is a good way of using the work I do to hopefully influence line policymakers uh, to help reducing and hopefully with time refusing and stop making plastic at least for single use plastic. Your research is mostly based on the fumes that are being released from the plastics. I feel that is a pretty new thing that, and a lot of people are still not aware that plastics are releasing fumes. So when did you start realizing that? Yes, so uh, when I was at the Center of Microbial Oceanography uh, Research and Education at the University of Hawaii, I was in a research group um, that was studying the uh, emissions of methane from biology in the ocean. My colleagues, they were measuring methane production from biology in seawater, and they were making incubations. And uh, they realized that most of the methane that was being produced was well over what they expected, so about 90% more than usually what you would measure from the biological uh, production. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, they went back to their experimental protocol and at that time they realized that, wow, most of the methane is being produced by the butters in which they were incubating seawater and um, these butters were made out of plastic. So basically plastic uh, would emit greenhouse gases such as methane, ethylene, propylene, propane, uh, CO2 as well. And methane, for example, is about 21 times more potent than CO2. So this was an uh, an important discovery and I, I, I decided to ask my boss, can I please continue working on this project and um, it worked so I could continue the research and uh, basically publish the paper about the emissions of greenhouse gases from, from plastic. Since you mostly work with uh, the plastics in the ocean, how about the plastics on land? Are they as harmful as um, the ones in the ocean? They I are even see. more. So we made the comparison. Okay. Of course, I'm an oceanographer and we started incubating plastic in water uh, to get a better understanding of how it pollutes when it's floating in the ocean, for example. But then we made comparable experiment where we would expose the same plastic, the same weight, same polymer to air rather than submerged in water. And this is when we realized that, oh, this is a big issue. 
because we had about three times more methane produced when plastic was exposed to air compared to submerged in water and 76 times more ethylene, which is also a greenhouse gas. So um, that was bad news because it means that we no longer treat plastic emitting greenhouse gases from pollution of plastic and from plastic that we see out there um, polluting the ocean or in landfills, but all types of plastic that is currently exposed to solar radiation is emitting these greenhouse gases and even more so when it's exposed to air rather than submerged in water. Oh man. Oh, I, 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 would, all, I, I would assume that uh, in the ocean it would be worse, but this is, this is, just man heartbreaking so when did you realize that we need to transform the way that we manage plastics then well i guess it's always been part of what i thought like we should we should not use plastic at least single use plastic items they are e easily replaceable by others re other reusable items so i don't really see the point in using single use plastic items. As for the other types of plastic, this is a little harder at this time to replace it with something else because plastic is so cheap most of the time and it has like wonderful properties that are very hard to replace. But mm -hmm. I trust science and technology to ones, I mean, to be able to replace like durable plastic that we use on a long-term basis uh, for the future. To be more specific, what do you think that we should be doing with the plastics that already exist? So I see this as a two way approaches, like we have all this plastic that's been produced since the 1950s and that ended up in the environment and is still in the environment degrading uh, and has terrible effect on, on, on the planet, like such as wildlife, for example, and we have all this plastic that will be produced or is projected to be produced up to 2050, which is even more than whatever has been produced since the 1950s, so a huge amount. So with the plastic that is already out there, uh, we have to remove it because it keeps on degrading, fragmenting, becoming smaller and smaller and harder to pick up. So we need all these organizations, beach cleanup, stream cleanup, river cleanup, ocean cleanup. We need all of these are organizations worldwide um, there are there to 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 remove that plastic but these organizations they are there to help with with the the, the problem that we used to have in the past which is mm -hmm. over consumption of plastic and problem with waste management issues but they should not we should not interpret them as being organization that will solve the problems for the future mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't mean then since we have organization picking up trash out out there that we should continue consuming plastic. Mm -hmm. um, then we have all this projected plastic to be produced and we need to, to bring that number low mm -hmm. and we need to change our habits. We need to uh, say no to single use plastic. We have to find better alternatives. Uh, we have to deal well with our waste. Uh, so these are all um, um, things we have to work to have a better future. Currently, one of the um practices that we have uh, is recycling. Um, and what do you think about those uh, plastics with those recycling logos on them? Well, recycling is definitely not a solution. It mm -hmm. used to be a solution 30 years ago, but I think in terms of human beings and technology, we have evolved and we know now that we should no longer use single use plastic. So we have to refuse plastic. And then if we refuse this single use plastic, then recycling we will have no more purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I think the first thing is to refuse it. And in, in the small instances where we need to consume single use plastic, yes, mm -hmm. recycling is the best option, of course. Before that, you mentioned about um, fragmentation of plastics. So I would like to get your thoughts on microplastics. What do you think about them? Well, so 
as plastic degrades in the environment, it fragments into smaller and smaller pieces. So a bottle, for example, can become thousands and thousands of microplastic pieces. Uh, so the longer we leave these plastic in the environment, the more fragments it will become with time. And the smaller these fragments are, the more bioavailable they are for the food web. So organisms that are smaller and smaller will be able to consume these small microplastic, which is bad bad news. And this is one of the major reasons why we need to remove this plastic out there before it fragments into smaller pieces, because mm -hmm. microplastic and picoplastic and nanoplastic, uh, they are so hard to remove from the environment compared to a butter. So we really need to be careful about this and to put a lot of energy on removing the plastic that is out there and then preventing more plastic from being dumped into the environment. Well, on that note, in your perspective, what is the most important public message about plastic? Yeah, is that we have to refuse single-use plastic. We have to find better alternatives. And although um, the consumers, I mean, we have a big responsibility, but we should make sure then where the plastic is coming from and the, the, the manufacturers of the plastic should also be aware of all these negative effects and work towards better solution than producing plastic. So very often we put the blame on the consumers, but we have to think about who's making this plastic and mm -hmm. to give responsibilities to the industry as well. Mm -hmm. That is true. I'm just curious, is your work um, ever involved in uh, climate modeling? I mean, the numbers then we put out for the production of methane and different greenhouse gases from plastic, they are used in modeling uh, of climate change, for example, but I don't directly do any climate change model. Uh, but I know then the science and we put out there and the numbers, they are being used for modeler. Yeah, this study was like a very, there was a very strong link be be between plastic pollution and climate change, mm -hmm. which are the two major issues in, in the world today in terms of environment. That's interesting. Well, on that, with your ongoing projects and your future projects, how are you planning to move forward? Is there something new that you're working on? Yeah, so I'm currently working on several projects. One of the projects is here at the Center for Marine Debris Research, and we are trying to understand better with Kayla Brignac, um, my master's student, uh, how long it takes for uh, different types of polymers to degrade in the environment. So we have this tank experiment where we have different types of polymers with different shapes, and we are looking at degradation and also the effect of the biology growing on the polymer itself. So this is an ongoing project. I also work on different projects related to the effect of the fishing activities on plastic pollution and how it affects our coral reef here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I work on other projects where I try to understand um, the, the role of the beach cleanup organizations in removing plastic debris at the beach or in the rivers, for example. So how how much they remove on a, on a yearly basis, for example. Uh, so these are several projects that I work on, uh, along with other small projects on microfibers. What is the challenge that you're facing currently in with these projects or just in, in that world of yours in general during your activism? Yeah, mostly, I mean, I wish that my science is used outside of the scientific community, especially to influence consumers and uh, to influence law and policymakers so they can design better laws for the future and also faster laws. Because when we do a ban on plastic straws or plastic bags, these bans, they take, they take years uh, to be uh, put in place. And also it's a small fraction of the overall single use plastic. So I really hope that in the future we'll have like better and faster laws and that will ban single-use plastic in general, overall. So it's a, it's a faster process. And then I think consumers, they will just follow and they will just adapt as human beings. I mean, we, we've been adapting for thousands of years. So uh, just changing our habits and not have to take single-use plastic uh, on a daily basis will be, will be very easy for, for consumers. That is all for my questions. I really wish that I can ask you more. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for Thank you. joining us today.
Thanks for taking the time to watch this interview with Dr. Sarah Jean. We learned a lot and we hope you did too. We continue to film interviews with people knowledgeable about plastics. So if you're interested in the Plastic Remanufacture Project by the Regional Environmental Action Committee, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have links and resources down below where you can support us and learn more about our purpose. Thanks again for watching and take care.